This is just a basic explanation of how to set a sprinkler timer. This is an ESP Me made by Rainbird. It's just a spare controller I happen to have on hand, so I'm using it for this demonstration, but it, this method should work for any sprinkler timer. Uh, the layout will just be different. Okay, right now it says no run times. Uh, that's because this I've cleared as much off of this as I can. Um, okay, auto run. This is where you set it when you want your program to run the way that it's supposed to after you've got everything set off. That's pretty exp expl <laughs> explanatory. If you set it off, nothing's going to run. <clears throat> set your date and set your time. You always want to make sure that these are correct. Just use these navigation buttons down here to change it. You know, side by side, let's say, you know, change the time. Fairly simple. Okay, so, watering start times. First of all, we have four different programs on this, this particular controller. And when you push this button right here, you can A, B, C, and D programs. Now, if you want to keep it basic, you only need to use one program if you're new to this. When you're somebody that, that knows what they're doing and wants to take it a step further, you can add programs, which basically means that you that turns this into four separate controllers. Program A will be whatever you set program A to be. Program B will be whatever you set program B to be. For now, we'll stick with one, one program, program A. Okay, set start time. This is, okay, first start time. Down. Okay, that would be, this one will be off at this point. Okay, there are, I believe, eight programs. Uh, let's see. Six, okay, six start times. Not program, sorry, I said the wrong word. Okay, so there's six start times. You only need one. You could put more in if you'd like, but that's more advanced. So let's keep it, again, keep it simple. So we'll set this up to start at 1 a.m., which means your first valve that you have set up in this pro, or in this particular program will start at 1 a.m. From then on, it will move in sequence by itself. So setting at 1 a.m. just means that's when the water will start coming on. You have to have at least one start time. Okay, set stations. This this controller can run up to 22 stations. Right now, it doesn't have the expansion, whatever, it doesn't matter. It can only run four at this moment. Um, so I'm going to set up four. And so we have, let's make an example, okay, um, where I live when it's about 100 degrees. Um, you want, for spray heads, you want it to be about 15 minutes every other day. Somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes, depends on how much shade you have, uh, wind, etc. So, we'll set number one for spray heads for 15 minutes. Because we're gonna, we'll, we'll do every other day, or close to that anyway. Okay, uh, station two. We'll set that to, say, part circle rotors, which in this area is about 25 minutes every other day. Station three, we'll set to full circle rotors, which is about an hour, pretty close to it. It's about 55 minutes every other day when it's 100 degrees. Okay, and number four, we'll set it to a drip system, which um, actually, I generally use bubblers, so let's say it's bubblers. I'll set bubblers for maybe five minutes every other day. Okay, that section is done if you only have four that are set up, four valves that are set up that way. It, that, that is just your particular valves. When, let's go back to it. If you have spray heads and you're in an area like mine, they will all pretty, be pretty close to that. Um, if you have uh, hat part circle rotors, and rotors are the ones that turn, but then come back to it and turn again. Um, spray heads are the ones that pop up and just spray. <clears throat> Full circle rotors are the ones that spray, but keep going around in a circle. Okay, and then bubblers are, they just basically emit a lot of water in one spot. So anyhow, you just have to find out which one, what ones you have so you can designate exactly how long you want each section to run. Okay. Here, days of the week. This has 
You can run this one off days of the week, or you can go to advanced watering cycle if you want to do. Right now, this means by the day. If you don't want to be done by the day, you can set it, there we go, cyclical, which would be, okay, water one day, skip one day, water one day, skip one day, or you can, you can go, say, we'll water one day, skip four days, because this, this means it will water every fifth day. You can do that if you want. I don't generally use cyclical. Um, it also has, oops, wrong one, sorry guys. It also has an odd setting and an even setting. I try not to use these because I'll give you an example. If you are if you set it up for, uh, you wanna water even days, then if you have a day with 31 days in the month, it will water two days in a row. Um, oh, sorry. If you're on, if you're on, um, if you're on even, it'll water two, or it will, it will skip two days in a row, at the end of, of those long months, and that's that's not good for most in most areas. So I try not to use even and odd. So back to, oops, got it set cyclical by the day. Okay, setting it by the day, very simple. If this has a slash through it, it doesn't water that day. So if you want to set it up to where it's watering, for example, Monday is a good day for here. Skip Tuesday, water Wednesday, skip Thursday, water Friday, and then Sunday. So this, this allows us to do four days a week. Like we're watering four days a week on this particular setup, the way that I just did it right here. You can water seven days a week, you can, or you can go to the cyclical. There are so many different ways to change that, but going by the week is obvious because you'll know that it's always going to be watering on those particular days. So you can look outside and say, yeah, it's working properly. Okay, adjust your percentage. Now, this is what you use in, say, May when it's not as warm outside. So if it's 100 degrees in July and it's, say, 60 degrees in May, you want to scale this back to, say, 60%. Because 100% is would be considered at 100 degrees. 60% would be maybe 50, 60 degrees, something around there. So if you scale this back, what it does is it changes all of your watering times by the percentage. So you don't have to go in and continually change your run times. So um, we'll go back up to 100%, assuming that we're in the middle of the summer. Uh, rain delay, simple set number of days so that it's not going to work if they're not going to run. If you get a lot of rain, you can set it on rain delay, click that to two days and it will make it or however many days you want to set it. I mean, if you've got a, a lot of rain, you could set it to, to be off for a week if you want to. It's it's whatever, whatever your particular situation calls for. So we'll turn that back off. Rain sensor. If you install a rain sensor, I, they, they work okay. They're not perfect. But if you're a person that's out of town a lot, you may want to install a rain sensor or get a smart controller that runs off the internet, which will turn turn it off when it rains. When other sensors in your area have been tripped, they're linked to the online system. Okay, manual one, a station on. You, this is so that you can run a particular station at a particular time. Say you, you just wanted to run number three for whatever reason. Okay, run it for, uh, for the X amount of minutes, say you're 55 minutes. Set it back to run and it will run. That's generally not used a lot. Okay, manual programming. Or manual program, you can run a particular program. What this is telling us right now is that if, if you were to run it at 100%, because we're still at 100%, your system will run for one hour and 40 minutes. Now if we scale this back, right here, the percentage, back to go back let's let's do it at 50 percent okay now it's it's figuring it out it's only going to run for 52 minutes for that that particular run time so you can set it to be able to run manually if you want to that's generally once you get it set you don't have to so i you know you maybe learn how to do it but it's not necessary 
Okay, test all stations. This is how you make sure that, that everything or that, that everything is connected properly and that all your heads are working. This is a very ni nice feature. You can set it up to where you're only running for say two or three minutes and then you can walk around your yard and look at everything. Okay. Off is self-explanatory. Now that this is, uh, this is set, set the sucker to auto run and you're ready to go. In the winter time, set it off. We are done.